On this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone, we're going to talk about Tuesday Wrestling, AEW Dark, and of course, Impact Wrestling. So all of that is coming up on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling, such so like AEW, NXT, New Japan, Impact Wrestling, NWA, many promotions, wrestlers, championships, and matches. I am your host, Jay Rodier. So, before we start with reviewing both AEW Dark and Impact Wrestling, I um, want to give you guys the updates what's going on for not only this channel, but also in my podcast, uh, DWZ Podcast with Jay Rod. So uh, I'm going to be releasing a new episode coming up. Now some things I may not be able to post. Sometimes I like to balance out certain things because I don't want to push too much pressure on myself. But if you guys are trying to find out what is the podcast, the, how to, uh, what platform, hold on. I got the info right here. No, hold on. Got it right Okay, so here are the distributions where you can find me on po my podcast. Because normally in the past, I, I used to do this with Nico, but we haven't I haven't seen him for almost a, a year or so. But um, we're no since late last year or late last this year, I think so. But here are the podcasts you can catch me on. Uh, you got Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify. Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. Radio Public. So if you guys are interested in checking out my podcast, I'm always there. Um, I talk certain things, you know. Uh, last episode, I talked about Slammiversary and all this, but the upcoming this, uh, talk on that podcast, uh, if you guys want a preview of that, it's going to be about Daja Gonzalez. Who, or better known as back in WWE, uh, Dasha Fuentes, who just recently competed in the Titan Games. And I'm trying to remember what else I'm going to be talking about. I broke down on the spreadsheet. Hold on a second. Um, oh yeah, now there's been talk about, from two different promotions, about having women's tag team championships going around. And also the final thing, it's now been in the air for quite some time. The Four Horsemen in AEW, a brand new version. It may not be called the Four Horsemen, but it will. So all of that will be on the podcast, hopefully in the next couple of days. I may do that tomorrow. If it doesn't happen, then uh, wait a couple of days. But I am working on that. So right now, let's get started with AEW Dark. All right, so let's get started with AEW Dark. Uh, some great matches here. It's mostly the squash matches, except uh, one that kind of um, will be more like a showcase type. So first match of the night was a women's championship match. Uh, no, a, a non-women's -cha championship match. Uh, Rochelle Chanel versus Hikaru Shida. Now, Chanel actually did some really kind of weird thing. She brought out a comb to brush Hikaru. She was like, what? Who does that? You know, so that kind of made things a lot more funnier for, uh, for me. But of course, we cannot uh, question Hikaru. She does strike this. You know, if you guys aren't familiar, right, she's good, good as a striker. She's the best on that. So Hikaru, she took the victory on this one. Next match, it's uh, Corey Hollis versus Super Bad Kip Sabian, as always, accompanied by Penelope Ford. I mean, yeah, she's always there by his side. But th there is a moment where, of course, Corey Hollis just did a, some a amazing spot, but at the same time, it did not um, go well because Kip Sabian took the victory. He didn't need 
Penelope Ford m that much, but he won the match. Now, um, this next interview was done by Daja Fuentes, but I mentioned this on the podcast. Now, as you recently been knowing, we have been seeming, seeming the teaming between both Brandy Rhodes and Allie. Now, in the past, those two have been enemies, you know, dating back maybe to Impact. I'm not 100% sure or how long their rivalry has gone. But recently, they've been for, they formed their this new tag team called the Nightmare Sisters. And so far, they have been undefeated. But of course, Brandy brought something that I know for a fact we all can disagree about AEW becoming one, having the best tag team division in all of wrestling. We know they have a stack of teams they have in there. I mean, we can go on from the Bucks, FTR, Kenny Omega and Hangman, um, many others. But we should see more of the women's. As we all know about the pre the other company, WWE, much of it was a bit of a joke when they when the first champions were inaugurated, and they took it way off the deep rails at some point. But I would love to see that, and that discussion will be on the podcast. So, let's move on. Then we have a tag team match of Brady Pierce with. Savvy. Now, if you guys don't know who Savvy is, his name is Tino Savvy, whatever. He is, in reality, the real-life boyfriend of Mandy Rose. He was amongst those that were released part of the Performance Center. He hasn't made an NXT live tapings before. I think he may have done one appearance. I'm not 100% sure, but he was amongst those that were released. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to go to AEW because... I'm not sure exactly what their plan is. They, I know they've been using a lot of jobbers for their dark events, you know, because we normally see a lot of the wrestlers on the dark, but not this time. They were facing against the best friends. Of course, mu we did not see Fresh and Squeeze there, but it was great to see the best friends ta uh, teaming as always. So, um, much uh, of... Trent, he actually put a little bit of the aggressiveness on Savvy, but I was impressed much of the best friends. Right now, they're number two in the rank, so they picked up a victory doing that famous move that they normally do. Next match was Will Hobbs versus um, Absolute Ricky Stars. Now, this was one of those matches where you see a, guy, a Will Hobbs, a very power guy, facing a guy, a guy like Ricky, who is one of the most fastest guy speedster like he has more agility more athleticness athleticnesses you know to go through and the one thing that impressed me he lit Hobbs up the dude was huge I don't know where that come from but it's great so Ricky Starks picked up the victory the next match is someone you may have been familiarized with you may have seen him on the on the Super J Cup Aaron Solo versus uh, Scorpio Sky. So this was another interesting match because we saw, if you guys are familiarized with Aaron Solo, he is unbelievable. We have seen him in New Japan. But now we got to see him face against a very high-ranking wrestler in AEW. We're talking about Scorpio Sky. Great match. I loved it. I, I always love Scorpio Sky's matches one of the best and he picked up the victory on this one next match was a very interesting one this one was Darby Allen versus Robert Anthony now Darby Allen we haven't seen him for almost a month until since double or nothing when he was taken out by Brian Cage he was mostly been focusing on Taz now Taz in the past ever since uh, Darby lost um, the opportunity for the TNT championship um, Taz has been being that guy who offered to help him, but Darby Allen was just not feeling it. And because of that, he got hurt thanks to Brian Cage. And now he came back this past Dynamite episode where he attacked um, Brian Cage with a skateboard. So he was mostly not his focus, like he wants to send a message to Taz. I mean, to. To, what's his name to Brian Cage through Taz but 
as always, um, Darby Allen took the victory. But of course, out of nowhere, here comes Brian Cage trying to give him a pounding. Then Robert Anthony tried to tell him what the hell is he doing. Like Robert Anthony seems like the kind of guy who doesn't like people stealing his spotlight. But the biggest shock and surprise was who Brian Cage allied himself with. It turned out to be Ricky Starks. He aligned himself with Brian Cage. Now, it's still unclear right now. Did Taz had anything to do with it? I mean, he seems like the genius. I mean, that's always been like that. Now, the next match was the main event for AEW Dark. We had the Butcher and the Blade facing off against the unlikely duo of Brandon Cutler and the librarian Peter Avalon being accompanied by the other librarian, Leva Bates. So, um, much of this match was good. I mean, I, I can see maybe down the line Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon could get a pick of a victory at some point. I mean, they had to face one of the most toughest teams in AEW. And I have to say it was great. But of course, as always, the Butcher and the Blade took the victory. But post-match, they decided to send a message to the Bucks through Peter at, through Brandon Cutler. If you all know, Brandon Cutler and the Bucks known each other for years. So this is going to be one crazy match between those two teams this coming AEW Dynamite episode. So stay tuned for that. So I hope you guys enjoy this part of AEW Dark. So let's move on with Impact Wrestling. All right, so right now we're in the aftermath, two days after, no wait, today's Tuesday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, three days after one of the best promote of uh, pay-per-view events by Impact Wrestling, Slammiversary. Now, if you've been aware recently, Slammiversary went number one on that day, the highest paid raid show ever, and there's been a lot of talk who has taken the credit. Some say it's the Good Brothers. Some say it was the championship match. Whatever the case is, it was awesome. I, I enjoyed it. I had a friend who actually saw it, saw Impact today. He thought it was not good, but give it a little time. So, it starts out with EC3. We all recall ever since um, Eddie Edwards won the title, EC3 just appeared out of nowhere in a in behind in the screen but he started talking about now he's in control of his own narrative he's now going through a different direction where he feels that he cannot trust politics he can't trust corporations anymore uh, this is something that if you guys are aware of back when he was in wwe they did not give him any enough um character wise what they should do he, they made him as this mute guy then drinking to me they kind of did not utilize them enough when he was with them and now I feel he's being that guy's like I don't care about playing by your rules I'm not gonna do that so I like it now the next the first match of the night was a rematch of the X Division championship match with the current champion Chris Bay facing off against the previous champion Willie Mack now, much of this match, there was a 50-50 chance that one of them can walk out with this title. Now, I wasn't sure yet. Now, I haven't caught on to Chris Bay yet because I'm barely uh, getting to know him because I've been hearing him since the independent scenes. Uh, but there was a part of me think that Willie Mack could reclaim the title. But uh, it was a great match the way it is. Uh, of course, Chris Bay acted like he didn't. He looked more like he didn't need Johnny Swinger to beat him. And, of course, he did it. Uh, he actually did it again. He beat Willie Mack to retain the title. So the real question is, who is going to be facing him off? Now, the next thing we see is the Good Brothers coming out, saying what a great time that they showed up at a perfect timing, making Slammiversary the number one paying raid show ever. And I have to agree, I enjoy it. Because many, we've been hearing it for a while now that these guys could be heading to Impact. You know, some of you say, why didn't they go to AEW? Well, I can't speak on that, I, but I can speculate. 
but that's another discussion. Maybe I'll put that on a podcast sooner or later, but we'll figure it out. So uh, when they were out celebrating their arrival, to say their merch actually went up the roof, sold out, that type of thing. But all of a sudden they were um, interrupted by Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. They acted like they're the new guys, but Ace doesn't know who these guys are. They're not the kind of people you think you can chit chat with because they, if you you know who Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows really are, the Good Brothers, where they from, who they've been with, who they hang out with, you know what that means. But Ace Austin, Mad Matt Fulton did, so that's how it ended. Now the next segment we see Heath Slater, or should I say just Heath now. He made it. He was trying to get inside the venue, but he wasn't on the list. Rhino said he was going to do it, but when he tried to call Rhino, uh, he still has that little feud with Hernandez after that whole arm wrestle arm, arm wrestle they had a week ago that went on for a week. But basically, Rhino booked himself in the match for that. Then we see another segment with Chris Bay celebrating. But out of nowhere, here comes Rohit Raju. Now, Chris Bay is not a fan of Rohit Raju, but Rohit Raju told him this. That you should know, now that you have a title, you got a target on your back. But, let me take the bullet for you. So Chris Bay kind of, you know, say, okay, you know, you, you may be a weasel. But if you're willing to take the bullet for me, I'm okay with it. I have no problem with that. You know, because that's what he does. He likes to let people take the bullet for him in order for him to win. So that's kind of interesting what we've been seeing with them. Now, the next one is the women's tag team match between Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles versus Havoc and Avai. These two hate each other completely. But during the match, there was a great comment where Kira Hogan even spoke out about this, like on a interview, not related to Impact that she will love for Impact to revive the Knockouts Tag Team Division. Now, if you guys don't know this, this is part of the podcast I will be speaking out real soon. But it makes perfect sense. We do have some teams. Like, we do see Kara Hogan and Tasha Steele's teaming. We do see Havoc and Nevaeh, uh, Rosemary and Taya, uh, Susie and um, Kali Ray, um, try to... Jordan Grace and... Uh, Jordan Grace and of course Alicia you know there's many people we can see in that but it was a great idea but the match was great but at some point throughout this match um, Tasha Steeles decided to pull out a chair and she whacked Havoc when she had her like ready to be power drive so by disqualification Havoc and Nevaeh won but it wasn't over apparently Havoc power drive um Kara Hogan so basically even though when Tasha whacked her with it it didn't affect her that much so they won by disqualification on this one so it was crazy and then they actually went back and throw in a very familiar uh, flashback moment of the week was the first match the first time where Eddie Edwards won his first title world title Back then, this was on um, a, on a regular impact on October 6, 2016. This was like almost four years ago. This was against Bobby Lashley for the world for the Impact World Title or a TNA title. If that was the case, but it was a great moment. It takes you back to how different um, Eddie Edwards was back then, and now he regained. He only had prior before Slammiversary, he was a one-time champion. Now he's a two-time. So, it's great to see that he's into that now. Now, what we see next is the aftermath with Callahan. There were some mistakes that were made between both Sh- by Shamrock. He's willing to admit his mistake, but he's not ready to talk about it as long as Callahan has this attitude. So, he told him that we'll talk to him about it next week. So, basically, Callahan questions him, but he doesn't see that Shamrock can see his own mistakes. So, basically, he knows it, but he was rubbing it in right in his face. That's what it was. 
then we haven't seen RV then we finally see RVD uh, and his girlfriend Katie Forbes we haven't seen those two together for a while we did see Katie Forbes at uh, Sonniversary for the knockouts gauntlet match but this time uh, Katie Forbes since Joey Ryan was terminated it looks like cancel culture could be canceled completely now that he's gone uh, I don't know about Jay Chris what's his status we do know about um, Dave Chris was also terminated due to allegations against him so I'm not sure I will find out more about it about Jay Chris's status but we'll see how that goes uh, let's see next thing we see is that match between Hernandez and Rhino but this one was a quick match Rhino took advantage of it and speared Hernandez to take all the money hit uh, Hernandez half of the money that he got from the last uh, Impact Wrestling uh, event it was so crazy Hernandez he kind of had that looks like saying okay so you want to play it that way so that's how it turned out to be then we see another uh, little talk with another promo with the North. Now, as you know, for weeks now, the North has been celebrating the fact that they've been champions for over a year. But nobody is giving them the credibility saying that they are the longest, you know, reigning tag team champions. But they are sick and tired of hearing about the Motor City Machine Guns. We can agree that Motor City Machine Guns are amongst the best alongside the Bucks, uh, Gallows and Anderson, um, Hardy Boys, the Legion of Doom, the Dudley Boys, but we can go on for that. So they're saying that they are the, reign the best tag team in the world, fact, but they look at the Motor City Machine Guns that they're the best in the world too, opinion. So basically, they're saying themselves that they are the true best in the world. And it's like open discussion type. So that's the main event. So we'll get to that. Then we see an unusual wrestler amongst those that were released. I'm referring to Brian Myers, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins. So it appears he is now joining Impact Wrestling. Now, some of you ask me, what about his best friend? Uh, Matt Cardona, better known as Zach Wild, Zach uh, Wild, uh, Wilder. I'm like, um, I don't know. It's still no word yet on what he's gonna do since he was released. We do know some wrestlers are making their appearances at Impact Wrestling. I don't know about the others, but we'll just wait and see. Uh, then we do a little, um, Slammiversary, how some people talk about the ones who were able to obtain the title, such as Donna Perrazzo, uh, Eddie Edwards, Chris Bay, how they're all happy that they actually got what they wanted. The North retained, but of course, the, the little beef with more City Machine Guns. That's an interesting aftermath video. Then they do an interview with Donna Perrazzo, um, saying that she has no plan, but she forgets she has a number one contender and that person is Kylie Ray who won the gauntlet this past uh, Saturday at the Slammiversary gauntlet match so she uh, Bizarro nearly tried to rip her her arm off but she was broken off by Alicia and Alicia and of course Kimberly and then we see Eddie Edwards comes out um, celebrating the fact that um, he is now the champion but despite of what happened with the previous uh, holder, he made it perfectly clear that he's going to be a fighting champion. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. The uh, reason we I say that was because of what happened with the previous champion we told. Now, we haven't seen this person for since the start of pandemic, before Rebellion. But now it appears that Eddie said he's going to put the title on the line every week. But one person had a problem with, with him, and that is the raging lunatic Eric Young. But Eddie Edwards is still upset what he did to what Eric Young did to Rich Swan, where he tried to take him out, hurt him at the injury he had that 
he came back too soon, but it turned into a brawl on this one. Now, the next interview we see is the delusional Moose believing that he is still the top champion. He has no interest going at the impact, going for the impact world title. He believes the TNA is the most prestige title, you know, and he is going to pick the challenger, not the challenger to him. But he did say that EC3 will not get an invitation. So he made that perfectly clear. And then we see Eddie Edwards give, giving another interview about him making that decision to be a fighting champion. Here comes Trey, who is willing to, he kind of set himself to be the first challenger. And Eddie had no problem with it. You know, he said he'll give it to him. So basically, he's cool with it. Then we have the, the I think I might have skipped something. Yeah. No. Then we had, of course, the TNA world title. Moose putting it on the line against Fa, uh, Fala Ba. This one was, of course, not um, the best moment for Fala Ball. He lost big time. As soon as Moose won, out of nowhere, here comes EC3 and put him out. No one knew how he got in. So I think what I see is this with Eddie and with EC3, why he showed up and attacked Moose. Moose going out saying that he'd beaten every wrestler who were TNA such as Ken Shamrock, um, RVD, claiming he is the world champion. EC3 himself is a world champion. So he is going to prove him, you never beaten me before. So Moose will try to say he's the best wrestler in the world, that he's the god of wrestling, but EC3 doesn't see him as that. He sees him as a, a fraud. So that's what I think is going to happen. I can't wait. Now, outside of the of the venue, Good Brothers were leaving until they were stopped by Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. But Ace Austin always has a trick up his sleeve. He contacted Reno Scum and attacked um, the Good Brothers. But it was still not enough. It's been announced next week that the Good Brothers will face Reno Scum. So this is going to be an interesting match. But I do have that feeling that Ace Austin will try to be there to make them look bad. But we'll see where that goes. Then we see a little thing with uh, Johnny E. Bravo at some pad. Now, it assume, I didn't know whose pad was it, but it turned out to be uh, Taya. They were originally were supposed to be alone, but Taya somehow got in. Then Rosemary decides, that, you know, I know how you got a good party. So she teleported various people. She teleported Kylie Ray. She teleported um, Fallaball and TJP, uh, TJP, Susie, uh, Alicia, Triple uh, XL. So basically, it became a party, and she's and Taya's like, "What is this?" That was funny, and I, I just can't believe. It. Now the main event was for the Impact World Champ uh, World Titles. So basically, it's this is where. The North has to prove themselves that they are the best. Even though they're saying that, that the, the fact is they are the best right now. That Mortar and City Machine Guns, they haven't been in TNA for almost 10 years. And this is going to be a perfect test for them. But man, this match was great. I enjoyed the tag team on this one with both teams. Mostly because I've been a Mortar City Machine Gun fan for a long time. Even if they're not in Impact or in Ring of Honor or any promotion that will have them, they're the best. But of course, Ethan Page's cockiness resulted in, how do I say, costing them the titles. And because of that, Mortar City Machine Guns became the new Impact World Tag Team Champions. It's great to see them now. They're two-time champions on that. So they, now we're seeing that they are the best right now. That the Motor Machine Guns are now the best wrestlers 
in the best tag team in the world. So it's pretty fun. So it ended like that, but after the show, we see somehow Heath managed to sneak into the venue. So it's still unclear what is he trying to do. But that's how it ended. But for now, hope you guys enjoy me reviewing these two episodes, these two sh uh, events between AEW Dark and Impact Wrestling. Uh, there'll be more to come. But like I said, please pay attention to my podcast. If you haven't already, I will try to leave the names of where um, of where the po uh, podcasts are. So if I leave it right here, yeah, right about there. So as for now, I must bid all of you adieu. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day.